Many of you have been asking, Hey, Happy Cabby, I would love to have a DVD of some of those wonderful balloon creations. Therefore, I can take it with me wherever I go so I don't have to watch it unless I'm hooked up to the Internet. My friends, such a DVD now exists. We're going to tell you about it coming up in this video. I'm the Happy Cabby, and guess who I'm here with today? I am here with my good friend, Flower Clown. Flower Clown, know, say hey. Hello. Hey. But anyway, this here is a, a cool little uh, business card. And uh, I'll say edit that in better lighting, because that lighting is not too good. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, what part of town do you uh, normally operate at? What part of the country do you normally Cleveland, operate? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Right now I'm in Phoenix. In came Phoenix. I came down here to visit friends and I knew you were in the area, so let's do lunch. <laughs> and that's what we're doing right now. We're here we're at right the now. Old Spaghetti Factory. As for me, I'm having the spinach ravioli, so it's pretty good. Yeah, real pretty restaurant. Uh-oh, speaking of which. We have bread. And we have salad. And this guy is our server, Michael, correct? Hey, recording. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, Michael. There we go. Video. <laughs> As you can see, I'm sticking to my diet. There's my salad. There we go. Put a lemon. And then we have Baby Millie. There's Baby Millie, for those of you that remember uh, that little video. And uh, how old is she now? She's going to be 11 weeks in two days. 11 weeks in two days. Well, there you in go. In two days, she will be 11 weeks. There we go. What else do you do besides uh, ballooning? Uh, you do uh, clowning as well, correct? Uh, basically a full-time clown. So mm -hmm. usually birthday parties consist of magic and balloons, but then mm -hmm. I also do a lot of restaurant work where it's just balloons and a lot of festivals where I just do balloons. So uh -huh. Balloons are the specialty, but, you know, birthday parties, it's good to have a magic show or some kind of a show. Do any kind of juggling? Very poorly. I Very do ride poorly? unicycle. I have three unicycles. Oh, three unicycles. Yeah, there we go. a regular size, a five and a six foot. A six-foot so, unicycle. We've got stitches from the six-foot unicycle, but broken no bones, <laughs> so knock on wood. Well, there you go. And, of course, uh, your YouTube username is Flower Clown. Yep, website's flowerclown.com, and if you search Flower Clown, I'm on every other website imaginable. So. There you go. Yeah, you're also, you're on Meta Cafe. I saw you over there as well. Yes, and, <laughs> and Photo Bucket, and Flickr, and MySpace, and Facebook, and... Yeah, we'll put, we'll put all the uh, the links into the uh, sidebar over okay, there for that'll, you. That'll fill up the sidebar. But anyway, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and dig into some of the salad. So, might choose something a little okay, bit later. Guys, anyway, Happy Cabby here. We just uh, finished up the uh, the dinner. And uh, now I'm going to ask uh, Flower Clown a couple of uh, questions about uh, the business side of balloons. And uh, we'll see how this one goes. A lot of people have asked me... Um, do balloon uh, artists make a whole lot of money? And for myself, of course, the answer is no. But uh, this person here uh, is uh, one of the inspirational people, uh, one of the people that I look up to as far as the type of balloon guy that I was hoping to become. And uh, he's actually done uh, pretty well for himself and his business. And he's going to tell you a little bit about more of the, uh, the business side of it. So, uh, for example, uh, how long have you uh, been in the balloon business? Started doing balloon twisting in 1988, so that's been 21 years. And uh, you probably started uh, doing like part time and stuff. I did it strictly as a hobby at the beginning. For about the first eight to ten years, mm -hmm. just made balloons for my nieces and nephews. Yeah. The problem was, didn't know what this was. <laughs> so you're taking a balloon. Yeah. And going. <laughs> Well, after about six of them, I was done. Yeah. So once... The, there's so many people that can't even do that. Yeah, once the, <laughs> once figured out the pump, that's yeah. kind of when there was no stopping me, and that's kind of when I, I picked it up and ran. <clears throat> now, when did you um, first decide that uh, that you wanted to uh, to uh, start your own business? Um, never really did. Actually, the business took over my life. Mm -hmm. I actually started doing balloons, like I said, as a hobby, just... Just because I, I, I love kids. I always play with kids, nieces and nephews, wanted to learn it for them. Um, and then, of course, you know, they got a little bit older. It wasn't exciting. Still liked the balloons. Um, and then basically kind of discovered the pump. Had another guy kind of help me out a little bit. 
went out and started doing some restaurant work, and after that, people started asking me for business cards, had some business cards made up, started passing those out, people started calling me for parties. Oh, what do I do for a party? Okay, I'll go and do a party. Sure, why not? So kind of did parties for some friends at the beginning to kind of get the experience. And after about three years, this just took over to the point where I could not do my full-time job anymore. And basically said, I'm going to give it a year, quit my full-time job, said, okay, I'm going to run with the balloon thing for a year. It's been eight years now. Eight years? Eight years full-time. Now, how many people uh, do you have uh, working uh, for you as uh, entertainers now? We got about... About, I'd say roughly about 30 people between face painters, magicians, character artists, stilt walkers mm -hmm. that we can call on. So anytime big festivals come in, you know, we kind of take care of all the entertainment for the festivals or a large party. Mm -hmm. Or even just, you know, a regular birthday party. If I'm not available, we've got somebody to fill the, fill the job. And, and people with, with definitely some good credentials and very entertaining people. Now, do you mind uh, telling, uh, telling me what, and uh, the viewers what your hourly rate is? Um, usually birthday parties, it's two hundred dollars for the first hour, and then drops down to uh, like one fifty for each additional hour after that. One fifty for each additional hour. Okay. Now, are you comfortable with uh, saying what your uh, annual income is? Um, don't really know. <laughs> um, basically, I mean, it, we're incorporated, so I get I get paid very little. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically because we're incorporated, I cannot take any money out of the business account. So the money that basically goes into the business account is strictly for business. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, granted, I do get a little bit of a distribution, and then I end up usually taking off a three-month vacation, going to Asia, and then coming home and I'm broke. But so, obviously, if you're able to take a three-month vacation to Asia, you're probably doing very well. Well, once, once you're in Asia, a hotel is going to cost you about $5 a night. Uh -huh. And then now that I've been going over there, I've got lots of friends, so I end up staying with friends. So you can live cheap in Asia. So okay. It actually works out well. Would you say it's over uh, 50000 Business pulls in about 150, but then a lot of that is paying out of their entertainers. Mm -hmm. So I probably make less than 50,000 a year, but still, I live very cheap. I'm, I'm yeah. not somebody that goes out and buys a lot of toys. Or I work seven days a week, so for those nine months, I'm working every day, whether it's clowning or whether it's working on the website or making mm -hmm. T-shirts. And what is your website again? Flowerclown.com. And can you uh, point to the uh, right over there? Yep. Yep, right over there is the uh, the link to the website where you can go oh, visit them. There. Yes, oh, that is correct. Oh, it's that way. <laughs> that is that way. <clears throat> and over there, you can also um, link to the photo bucket over there where you can check out some of the pictures. And uh, you also have a, a DVD out, don't you? I have a DVD where I actually um, teach 101 different balloon animals. And uh, how long is the DVD? It's about eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. It's 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 on a DVD, but it's actually made to play in a computer. So uh -huh. using uh, QuickTime or using one of the uh, video programs. So but but you can also put it in a regular DVD player. If your DVD player does play movie format, computer format videos, yes. Okay, so basically uh, just stick it in your uh, CD-ROM, and that's really the best way to go for yeah. it. On, a, on an old DVD machine that doesn't play those, it won't. Work. Okay, but the new DVDs probably will? New DVD players play those videos. Okay, cool. And uh, how much is the uh, the DVD? Uh, $30, and I ship anywhere in the world for free. $30 and for free. So flat shipping. So you there pay we go. 30 bucks and I ship it off. There we go. So if you live in New Zealand, we'll send it to you. There we go. And uh, let's see here. Um, how many uh, different uh, balloon animals in total would you say you know how to do? Uh, that's unlimited. I mean, there's things I've made once, things that kids have asked me, and I've just, okay, there it is, I made it, mm -hmm. and never made it again. So as long as I know what something looks like, I can usually make it. Can you make a pair of knees? Uh-huh, I've got two of them right below my waist and above my feet, so that's not a problem. <laughs> Let me tell you the funny story about that one. Uh, this was uh, back when I was still in Joplin, and this kid came over and he said he wanted a pair of knees, which I was thinking... You know, knees. You know, right, right by the, right by the feet. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I, I made this, and the kid looked at me like. <laughs> so the mom came over, and it's like, "What did you make for my kid?" And I was like, "I made him a pair of knees." And see, here's one knee, here's the other knee. And I said, "No, no, no, it, it's a dog." 
And uh, so I said, well, I, I, I don't know what a Pyrenees looks like, but I can make a dog with my hands behind my back. And uh, if you like, you can uh, click the link on this little annotation right here, and that'll take you straight to the, uh, to the video. Or we also got it off to the sidebar as well. But uh, yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite stories about the Pyrenees. <laughs> so yeah, I could probably make one of those as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the dog, I'd probably have to see a picture, and then after that, yeah, I can do it. Okay. Uh, Next question. Uh, let's see. Next question here. It's an interview. I didn't know I was getting an interview. <laughs> well, you know, you, you've been a, you've been a big help for me, and uh, this Good. is something I'm trying to do to uh, to help uh, help promote you and your channel, your DVD sales, your website, and stuff like that. You know, just Thank trying you. to repay some of your kindness. And uh, let's see here. What uh, balloon artist? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be on YouTube, but uh, just what balloon artists uh, do you look up to and you know, and you find really inspiring? Um, basically, I mean, granted, the balloons are a big part of what I do. Um, actually, Legos kind of got me started. Legos? Legos. So I, I moved from plastic to latex. Mm -hmm. Most people move the other way around, but that's how I did it. So, okay. So I kind of, as a kid, grew up making Legos. So that was basically my childhood. And I actually went to college for engineering as well. So I have a degree. haven't used it in quite a while, but uh -huh. I have it. So if anybody needs it, I could probably sell it on eBay. So let me know. <laughs> um, so, but other than that, I have bumped into to balloon twisters throughout the years. Um, John Holmes, who's a balloon twister out of Texas, I actually got to work with him at a clown convention. I think and John Holmes is a balloon twister, not not the one that you're thinking yeah, of. Yeah, he's a balloon twister. So <laughs> he's a very very Christian balloon twister. Yes. And so, but a very nice guy. And a funny story. Um, he was actually at a, a convention, and this was I think in '96. We hosted one locally in Cleveland, and very nice guy. He actually helped me out a lot. So, um, as a as a thank you, I actually put some money in his Bible. Didn't tell him about it. Put some money in his Bible and actually put my card in there. Well, come to find out, a couple months later, he was driving across country doing, you know, the circuit, doing balloon teaching and that, and ended up, he was low on funds, didn't know how he was going to pay for the hotel, went to his Bible to kind of figure out, you know, kind of get inspiration, turned to the page, found the money I left him, and that kind of paid for his night in the hotel. So. <laughs> a few years later, we ended up running into him again, and he kind of actually thanked me at that point, and it was kind of a cute story. So cool. I don't think anybody's mentioned it. I know I haven't really mentioned it to anybody. He may have, but, but kind of wanted to do it today. The other question I wanted to ask is, uh, in addition to uh, the balloons, you're also a, a clown, correct? 99% uh, of my, my, my work as a balloon twister, I am in full makeup and full clown. Now, one question that uh, a lot of people have is uh, a lot of uh, young people especially, uh, I find, uh, tend to be uh, afraid of clowns. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the images they see on television and the movies with clowns always being portrayed as the bad guy or the killers and stuff like that. When you uh, run into somebody who has a, a fear of clowns, um, how do you uh, approach it and how do you handle that situation? Very easy. If, so, if I know somebody's afraid of clowns, basically what I do is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that usually helps with the fear. <laughs> no, usually, I mean, I deal a lot with little kids, so yeah. I've, I've gotten <laughs> very comfortable with it. Um, some kids actually, yeah, I mean, I will see them and they will like be in the kitchen kind of peeking around the door and, you know, all the other kids are having fun, so they're curious. But, um, if it's a lot of little kids or kids that are afraid of clowns, oh, excuse me, just hate, um, I'm not as animated. I will actually sit on the floor, I will actually lower my voice and talk very softly to the kids and kind of do the same magic show, but do it very low key. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are adults, too, that are completely afraid of clowns. I mean, I do restaurant work. I'll have somebody come in and say, hey, come over here. My friend's afraid of clowns. I don't do that. No. You know, it's like, no. It's, it's like if somebody's afraid of heights, you don't take them into a skyscraper and, and hold them by his ankles and dangle them over the edge. Uh, it's a very genuine fear. Yeah, um, so yeah I, and it's, it's not something to be, to be made fun of. Yeah, so it's, you know? I, I understand it. Um, and... I kind of under I mean I understand it as as their side as well. White face clowns like your Ronald McDonald, your rainbow wigs, your big hair. Yeah, they are a little scary. 
Um, so when basically I came up with my clown character, I do a very simple hobo style clown. Mm -hmm. I do and uh, here's a, a picture of you and your uh, clown makeup, by the way. Uh, oh, you're going to show it. Okay, that's the editing part. Yeah. Um, so basically when I came up with my clown face, it's like I do not want to be one of those big white face, big hair clowns. So I did a very simple makeup and um, went with that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have told me over the years that they're afraid of clowns, but because they can see my eyes and uh -huh. I'm not completely covered, they can handle me. So I'm not Pennywise, but yeah. one day I hope to be. Do your balloons float? Uh, with a little bit of hot air. <laughs> I got a lot of hot air. There we go. <laughs> and, and on top of water. So anytime I make a boat or some kind of a duck, guaranteed they will float. There we go. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> wanted... A, a tank. Do you think you could put together a tank? It's possible, yeah. I'll we'll probably run through it one time to make sure I got it and then we can teach it. Okay. Cool. So, so I guess right here is where I'll pause the video. Okay. Now Flower Clown is going to make a tank. <laughs> okay. Kind of very basic. We kind of did one a little bit more detail, but I don't need to go that far. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take two balloons. I'm going to use gray and green. The gray is going to be for the, the tread of the tank. So basically about eight fingers or so. Bubble, ear twist, come back, twist that off, wrap that around, push it through to lock it, and another ear twist. So very basic. Break that one off. Tie that off. That's going to be our tread. Then we're going to do the exact same with this one. Kind of measure it out. Give that a twist. Another bubble. Here twist. Back up. Bubble. Spin that around. Through. And another one. So the exact same thing. Twice. Pop that off. I'm going to save these scraps just in case. Now these, we can put these two together. That'll give us our tread and that'll give us our top of our camera. Wrap that around. This one. Wrap that. It's going to give us our basic shape. So I'm kind of going with that one. I'm going to use some pieces here. We're going to make the turret right on top. So we can even do that just by making almost the exact same thing, but we'll do it a little bit small. And on this one, I'm going to put two bubbles, two ear twists. Just because I can. Right there. Now, now let me get a, a close up of that one. And that will actually wedge. So two pinches on top, one pinch twist on the bottom. Right in there. It kind of gives there we us go. more of a square shape, which is a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. And then basically for the, the top of the tank, I am going to put an, an ear twist on here. Well, actually, I'll do it later. But basically, take a scrap piece of balloon, wrap that around. Like such. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put an ear twist in here just so I can get uh, a 45 degree angle rather than a 90 degree angle. And then that way this And you just roll that uh, pinch twist in there. Roll that pinch twist in there and then that way it'll stick straight out or you can actually maneuver it up and down how you like it. Mm -hmm. This I'm just going to tie that off and break it. There. Now that's kind of our basic shape. So from there, you can actually let me get my big fat Sharpie marker. And the detail. Detail is the key. So what we're going to do is just going to draw a tread like you'd have on a tank. You also got some wheels on a tank, like such. Do that on both sides. Get some more wheels on there, like that. You can put U as A, or if you want, depending on where you're at in the world, you can always do uh, China. Most things are made in China, so we'll put a little Chinese symbol on that one okay, as well. Okay, and uh, what does that say in Chinese? Uh, it actually stands for Middle Kingdom, which is what they call China in China. There we go. So in China, they don't call it China, they call it Middle Kingdom? They call it the Middle Kingdom. Hmm. So that way... 
Now, they probably don't actually say Middle Kingdom. They say the Chinese word for Middle Kingdom. Yeah, which... <laughs> Putong, Putong, which I don't know what that is. Okay. So, so, but yeah, there is an actual word. I mean, in English, it translates to Middle Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And then on the on the tip of the... Uh... What, do, what do they call their uh, fine-quality uh, dining plates? Because over here, we call it China. Oh. They call it a plastic. Plastic. Yeah. Okay, there we go. But you can draw a little black thing on there, which kind of looks like it. And you can add a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can put a little face on there. Yep. Add a little face on there, because, you know, could be a, a woman driving the tank. You there never go. know. Over here, we got a uh, little bubble. That's a little lady driving the tank. We'll give her some hair. At least we'll give her a butch. There we go. And we'll call her Sinead. Sinead? There we go. Sinead. <laughs> and it actually it has a nice rock because usually tanks will actually rock. So it's uh huh. Like, there we go. Basic basic tank, very easy to figure out. Okay, cool. And if you guys uh, want to learn any more balloons, you can always uh, check out YouTube's channel on uh, Flower Clown. And uh, then of course you can also purchase his DVD, and the links are uh, right over onto the side. There we go. Now we're going to have a recording. Okay. We've got a few kids. We're actually at the restaurant, so we got a few kids. So rather than just having the two tanks, I've got to make something a little bit nicer. And then I have another idea, which I've never made a video for, but it's something that I've made a lot of. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll do that on this one. Uh -huh. Okay. Just one. Just one. Just a quick one. Me being flower clown, of course. Mm-hmm. Gonna make this flower. Now this is a really cool technique. Look at this. Comes out perfect. Wow. Almost every time. <laughs> and then just wrap that around inside. Stretch it out a little bit. Almost too fast for the camera to follow. Ah. That was cool.